All right, welcome back. Uh, you're watching Daybreak on Trust TV. Time for us to take a look at the dailies. On Daybreak, we have Dr. Teofilos Abba, the director of Daily Trust Foundation, with us in the studio. He'll be taking a look at the papers with us this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Welcome to Daybreak. Uh, well, I hope that you were able to have some rest <laughs> in this season. <laughs> well, uh, it's not a period that uh, many people... I'm, I'm lucky that uh, I'm no longer in the newsroom. <laughs> if I were in the newsroom, I would, I would have a, I mean, a sleepless uh, night. You have to monitor the elections and make sure that, look, you, you get the right uh, results. Well, since I'm no longer in the newsroom, I've left people like Stella and maybe Ayuba. People can can now do that. Yes. But we are. I'm, I'm now watching the news like other leaders. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank now you. let's say, take a look at the dailies now on daybreak, beginning with the Daily Trust newspaper. The lead story here uh, says NNPP wins Kano, APC in Kaduna, Niger, Benue, Nasarawa, Borno, Eboyi. Cross River. It has the riders that says PDP clinches Plateau, Rivers, Delta, Taraba leads in Zamfara. INEC declares Adamawa poll inconclusive. Soldiers killed two policemen in Taraba. Collation suspended in Abia, Enugu states. You'd find all the details of that on page 4, 11, and 16. Just to uh, bring you up to speed with the outcome of the governorship and state assembly. Uh, elections. Now, above the list story, two killed, many abducted as bandits block Buari Jerry Road. Analysts forecast interest rate hike as MPC meeting ends today. Notorious bandit Omaru Nagona killed by troops. You find that on page 17. Now, uh, it's very interesting to take a look at the political map in the country and how uh it's uh, somewhat changing uh, a lot of new faces uh, on the, on the in the political scene you have uh, uh, so far uh, 23 states that have been announced uh, the apc winning 15 and the pdp uh, 7 you have about nine uh governor seeking re-elections uh, so far uh, re-elected and also uh others who are coming in for the first time if you take a look you see uh umo eno rata namadi aliyu abba sani heisend uh mutfuang bago uh Imwifuru, sharif or two fubara and kefas these are some of the new names that you'll be hearing going forward as governors of those states now uh, below that uh, Ramadan, look out for moon tomorrow, Sultan tells Muslims. Uh, that's on page 26, and then at the footnote, Zamfara Anambra speakers lose to PDP candidate. Uh, Kano governorship, we are studying results, will make our position known, says the APC. China, Nigeria trade deals dropped by 37 billion naira in one year. You'd find all the details on page 21. These are the main stories on the Daily Trust newspaper. Now let's look, take a look at the Punch newspaper. It's also on the election results. It says APC wins 15 states, PDP 6, NMPP takes Kanu. And the first rider, 27 killed nationwide in election violence, Thogri. Then we have Ganduje Tambua candidates lose. The second rider, PDP rejects Oshun. PDP rejects Ogun, Katsina results. Konkosia supporters defy curfew, jubilating Kano. INEX suspends Abia Enugu coalition, declares Adama governorship poll inconclusive. And beneath that, we have a map that shows the states that have gone to the blue. The blue there represents the APC. The states that have gone to the red, that's the PDP 6. And then we have a new color there, which is yellow. The state that has gone to the NNPP. Then beneath that, we have someone who raises civil servant salary by 20%. Lagos husband arraigned for wife's death. Musician friend killed BDC operators, guard arrested. And just by the mass said, we have accept defeat. Delta governor elect tells Omo Agege. And above the mass head, ERCC grills four NCAA chiefs over alleged two billion naira fraud. 
anger as NMPCL hires expatriates to head subsidiary. Still on the punch, EU observers blame politicians INEC for vote buying. These are the major stories on the Punch newspaper for today. All right, now let's take a look at the Guardian newspaper this morning. The lead story there, protest as INEC suspends election results in Adamawa, Abia, Enugu. It has the writers that says 2023 election lacked transparency, damaged public confidence in INEC, says EU. Sani Sule, uh, Oborewori, uh, Fubara, Yusuf, others declared winners. These are the main stories. And then also below the pictorial, INEC declares Kebi gubernatorial election inconclusive. Uh, so you have uh, another one there, lingering economic challenges push 44 firms off NGX list in seven years. So you have uh, inconclusive elections declared uh, in Adamawa, Abia, Enugu, and Kebi states. So these are the main stories this morning. Now let's take a look at the nation newspaper. Still on election results. APC wins 15 states. PDP 6, NMPP takes Kanu. And um, the rider, Labour Party leads in Abia. Fubara, Otu, Ovori are governors elect. And then just by that, we have a table showing the winners of these elections and the runners up. And above that, we have polls inconclusive in Adama, Kebi, Abia, and Enugu. And above the masthead, Lagos OK's 20% salary raise for workers. Payment backdated. Cash crisis, banking infrastructure for expansion. We also have expect new moon for Ramadan tomorrow, says the Sultan. Jam sets new guidelines for direct entry registrations. These are the major stories on the nation. All right, now let's take a look at the Vanguard newspaper. And on the Vanguard newspaper, you have Sheriff Yusuf Nwifuru, Zulum, Mutfuang, others emerge governors. Uh, you have tension in Enugu, Abia, as INEC holds results collation. Electoral officers escape lynching in Niger. <coughs> Beg your pardon. Police confirm killing of two officers by soldiers in Taraba. EU mission knocks INEC, says violence, vote buying, mad polls. 78 million Nigerian children risk water related crisis, says the UNICEF. Uh, at the very top there, you find uh, banks borrowing from CBN down 14% to 453.7 billion naira. These are the main stories on the Vanguard this morning. Over now to the leadership newspaper has a slightly different headline. It says, drama as INEC declares Binani's historic march inconclusive. The first writer says, PVC has collected more than vote margin between APC candidate and Governor Fintory. Then the second rider, election to hold them 47 wards across 21 Adama local government areas. Results suspended in Abia, Enugu. And beneath that, we have despite weak, weaker Naira, Nigeria's foreign trade surplus rises by 162%. Cash crunch killing businesses are Fenifere laments. And we also have uh, a picture of three newly elected lawmakers with the caption, new kids on the block. Three new legislators in their 20s share plans for state. And just above the mass head, we have APC Consolidates, wins Benue, Borno, Cross River, Kaduna, Nasara, Sokoto, Eboi, while PDP retains Bauchi, Delta, Rivers, and retakes Plateau. These are the major stories on the leadership for today. All right, now uh, let's uh, get some more perspectives on some of the stories that uh, we have uh, for you this morning. Like we told you, we have Teofilos, Dr. Teofilos Abba, the director of uh, Daily Trust Foundation, with us in the studio. Thanks again, Dr. Uh, for joining us on Daybreak this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Well, it's all about the outcome of the governorship and state assembly elections. We've seen uh, some new faces now in the political space and uh, some of the governors re-elected. However, some are not that lucky. So, for instance, uh, we understand that uh, the Zamfara state governor has lost his re-election beat. Mm. How does that come to you in, in your assessment of the election? Well, um, if you look at the elections, I mean, so far, 
um, a classic sense of power struggle. You know, it has gone beyond from printing developed papers to struggle among uh, the political heavyweights, you know, and who gets, uh, uh, who gets the, the highest number of votes. It's, it's, I mean, power, I, I mean, raw power struggle, that's all we are witnessing now, to struggle among the political heavyweights to, uh, to grab power at the various, uh, in various states. And uh, I've also noticed that the fortunes of the PDP um, keeps diminishing, you know, and uh, that is quite sad because we are likely now not going to have a very robust uh, um, or the opposition if the PDP, I mean, keeps going down. You remember the PDP was in power for some years, but now from being a dominant party, and right now it's only six states that PDP has. And then, um, we notice that the APC, which is supposed to be at a disadvantage, yeah, it's, it's seven now. The uh -huh. PDP has seven states. Has seven states now. Okay. And then, based on the results that have been that announced. Would announced so far, yeah. then the APC, which is supposed to be at a disadvantage because of uh, what we have, what we say the, I mean, the poor performance of the party is, I mean, gaining more momentum. So it's like, you know. Um, I don't know. The, 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 the result of the election is showing uh, the parties that are making more effort, I mean, to actually grab power, not so much as um, what, they have, what they are putting on the table. But, you know? And Dr. Abba, when you look at this election, the, go mm -hmm. the uh, governorship election and the presidential, during the presidential, we saw a lot of upsets. Yes. We saw a lot of governors, not sitting governors, mm. unable to win their uh, bid to yes. the Senate. Mm. We also saw a uh, chairman of a party losing his state. We saw the president and the governor mm. of his state losing the state to the PDP. But we found that in this, in the governorship, the governorship yes. apart from the biggest upset which we have seen from Zamfara, and we Kano. saw that, and, and Kano, and mm. Kano was almost expected. Mm. Uh, but apart from that, we saw that the APC was able to reclaim some of those states that it lost during the, the presidential. Yes. What do you think happened? I think um, after, you know, after the presidential election, the APC uh, was destabilized, you know. Then the one week extension, I don't know, even though it was because of this issue of configuring uh, the, uh, what do you call it, beavers. I know. But I think the one week extension, you know, helped the APC to actually reorganize um, itself, you know. So I, I think uh, what, has, what has happened in this election, you know, demonstrates that people can actually overcome, I mean, uh, the I initial shock. You know, what I've noticed is this, for the results that were declared um, early, you know, those are those that were declared maybe on, uh, on Saturday and maybe part on Sunday, you know, we saw some upsets. But as, as the results were delayed, mm. you know, we suspect that some kind of manipulative activities were going on, you know, and, and that is why even areas that you, you I mean, you, you, you hear about a particular party leading, we now discover that oh, they are no longer leading, uh, the APC is winning and all this. I'm not saying the APC is fraudulent, I mean, that's what I'm saying. But then the delay in the release of the elections in some, in some places uh, gives room for a kind of uh, uh, insinuation that you know, some things were going behind the scene and they struggling, I mean, struggles to change figures and things like that were happening. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we've seen a lot of, uh, 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 I would say, uh, appraisals of mm -hmm. the performance of INEC as far as the elections are concerned. Mm -hmm. And uh, the EU has also released a, a statement uh, also appraising the performance of INEC. Uh, it's the, it blames politicians uh, and INEC uh, for vote buying. So those are some of the stories uh, that we are seeing. So in terms of the irregularities that have been pointed in this uh, governorship and state assembly elections, when you put that side by side with that of the presidential election, have we really learned any, anything? And have we seen any improvement? Well, I use one phrase, I, I say power struggle. You know, I used it, I mean, earlier. I, I think uh, the, the main problem we have with elections in Nigeria has to do with the desperation of politicians. You, you see, if you look at how desperate politicians, uh, I mean, politicians have been over the years, not just in this election, not just in this election, but in previous elections, you know, if you remember the 
uh, I don't know, you may not remember, the 1965 election, uh, you, we had serious crisis, both in the 64 federal election and 65 election in, the, in Western Nigeria. And you know that the crisis led to the coup and the civil war because politicians were very, very desperate. You know, if I vote buying did not start in this election, if you look, look at the history of vote buying in Nigeria, right from the first election that, that was conducted in 64, 65, there was a whole lot of vote buying, a lot of manipulations. Now, if you come to the 1983 election, we also had issues like that. You know, that was the Omoborio was the election, Michael Ajassin election, which led to a serious crisis in Dondo State. And based on that crisis, the military had a reason to intervene in 1983, 84. That was the first coup, you know. And so the desperation of, I mean, politicians in Nigeria is actually affecting democracy. And I'm happy that EU is making a statement because EU is one of the funders of the, I mean, of the current uh, electoral, uh, uh, um, elect electoral exercise. EU provides a lot of funds because they want Nigeria to get things right. Okay. And okay. EU does so. No, okay. EU does so because they want to see democracy work in Nigeria. But, I mean, politicians especially, we blame INEC, but then you, politicians are too desperate. What we thought is this, if you want to, to become the president, you want to become the governor, let us have your agenda. But in the current um, uh, election, we don't even know what NP NNPP stands for. We don't know what PDP stands for. We don't know what APC stands for. We don't even know what Labour Party stands for, except that oh, Labour Party is supposed to be a leftist party. I don't even think it's actually a leftist party in the research of it. So we don't know what these parties are standing for. All we know is that politicians are struggling to grab power at the center and in the states. All right. That's, so, all, we, so that's if, all we have seen. So and so they are very said, desperate. From what you have said, the desperation has always been there. Yeah, it's always so, been there. And it shouldn't so, be so. So there are certain people who are saying that maybe the pecs of offices in Nigeria, if they are not there or if they are not as much as they are, maybe people will not be so desperate to occupy these offices. Well, uh, you can talk about uh, the perks, I mean, of um, Because the if office. people but know that it's work that you're, you're going to do, maybe you won't be so desperate. But the reason why we are where we are today is that there's work that ought to be done which, which people don't do. You understand? We have a lot of work. You see, if you become um, a governor, for instance, if you are a governor of a state, you have a lot of work to do. You, you have to provide social services. You know, one of the things that we have ignored is the fact that the governor is not there to demonstrate that he's the luckiest person or to them that he's wealthy or successful. He has to provide social service. You know, for you to accept that position, you must ensure that, look, the education system works. You must ensure that, I mean, uh, there's water, there's health facility, there are roads. You know, there are things that will make people, you know, comfortable, there's more security. But when all these things are, are not being provided, but you sit on a high chair, the you people, know, collecting are, money from the center, are, collecting tax, are and people, spending. Are the people really demanding these things? Are these things a priority for the people, the electorates that go to vote, really? Are they really priority? Because yeah, I from, mean, people from the na narratives and from all the discussions we've seen in campaigns mm -hmm. and, and all of that, it doesn't look like these social services that you talk about mm -hmm. is at the front burner you know, of deciding who gets to become what? I think uh, what has happened is this. Nigerians have got to a point that they know that this, I mean, this thing should be given. They know that the government should provide A, B, C, D, E, F. And they make requests. Government, do this for us, do that for us. Even when um, politicians go to communities to, com to campaign, so oh, when I get there, I will make sure that your roads are okay. For instance, you see, when there is what to talk about, what to call the budget process. Now, when you want to, I mean, do a budget for a year, a particular year, you go to the, you are supposed to go to the communities. And the communities say, well, these are our needs. Then you now include these things in the budget. You understand? And these things ought to be done. You know, the people know what, they, what government should do for them. Government knows what they should well, do doctor, for them. But doctor, what Ayuba is saying is, if the people know what they want, are they really demanding? Because we saw that they, they are pushing forward the ethnic issues and religious issues, even in the selection or election of the, of the person. So it doesn't look as if the ability of the person to provide these things is in the, on the front well, it's, burner. It's when, quite when unfortunate. They, when it's they quite they unfair move. that ethnic and religious issues are taking the front burner in Nigeria. And it's the politicians who are making them issues. 
It's the politicians who, who will tell them, oh, this one is a Muslim, don't vote for him. This one is a Christian, don't vote for him. This one does not attend my church, don't vote for him. This one does not belong to us. That is the politicians who are, who are whipping up this, so this sentiment. If, so it if, is not the people. Is it so so for, if really the social services that you mm. talk about, it's of concern to the people, why should these things matter? Why should some of these issues thrown up by the mm. politicians matter to them? Why, why should they take it to heart? Why should, why should they, you know, so so seriously and so passionately mm. uh you know count on those things as though they are it, the main issues that matter. Yeah, i think enlightenment has to has to come in you see if you look at um, elections in nigeria it has always been about ethnicity and religion over the years not just the 2023 election the 1963 i mean 64 65 election was about religion and ethnic all 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 all, 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 all over, over the years 83 election was also about it so is what i'm so what i'm saying is that is nigerians need to come out of um need to come out of this sentiment the important thing for any country security and economy you know that is what is important but as far as nigeria is concerned the politicians have elevated religion and ethnicity over and above I mean, uh, security, economy, and the welfare of the people. Okay, let's, let's talk and about... And it shouldn't be so. Yes, uh, let's talk about the role of security here. Uh, you said focus should be uh, on security. Let's get your own thoughts. We have a story here where two people were killed in Taraba State as a result of a clash or a fracas that ensued between the police and the army. Close to a, in an in, a, in an election season, in a, in a moment where they are supposed to be providing security and protecting the, demo, the uh, you know the, our democracy. Here you have security personnel clashing and fighting to the extent of killing themselves. What does that say? Now, if you have thugs coming to disrupt collation centers, and now you have security personnel. Mm -hmm. fighting themselves what does that say really actually i think it has to do with uh, with interagency rivalry you know because um we have seen that some powerful uh, i put it in corner politicians i mean have uh, maybe soldiers and policemen who are protecting their interests during the election and so the rivalry between the soldiers and the policemen is what we are seeing you know it's quite unfortunate that, that is happening you know, I, I spoke to one uh, police officer who used to monitor elections. I said, why are you not going to work, I mean, to monitor elections? He said, no, I don't want to go. I said, why don't you want to go? He said, well, um, when we go for uh, election, uh, I mean, uh, assignment, you know, we are always told what to do. When you go there, this is what you must do. That is what you must do. And one of the things he said shocked me. He said, look, we are told that when you get there, even if you see talks, even if you see talks, and misbehaving, do nothing because they are only political, they are not armed robbers, you know. So, they told them that they are just part of the whole political and power struggle. So, I mean, if you see talks, I mean, don't, uh, don't lift a finger. So and talks I, are now recognized now. So, if you, if you now In see, the political you, process, you, can, you, can, yeah, you can now <laughs> see why I mean, soldiers and policemen will clash, you know, if they represent different interests, perhaps. I mean, uh, candidate A had soldiers behind him, and candidate B had policemen behind him. And maybe something or two is happening during the uh, election. Why isn't uh, that a clear process. violation of the code of conduct that was given to them before the election? Because I do know that before this particular election, there was one that was uh, prepared and provided to all security personnel that were going to take part in this election. Yeah. Yeah, you see, and but, so, but and, all, and, those, all the so, codes have been violated. And so shouldn't there be sanctions for yeah. all of this? Yeah, all the codes have been violated. Even the codes that INEC even created for itself, INEC has violated this own code. So policemen have violated that code. Even politicians who signed peace accord and all those things, they say we are going to, I mean, uh, ensure that whatever is the outcome we accept. They also are violating uh, all the codes. So it's very unfortunate that is happening in Nigeria. Because as far as elections are concerned, it should bring out you know, the kind of candidates who are going to work for the country. Mm -hmm. But now we are not seeing that. The kind of people that are coming up are people that are propped up by some politicians and those who are so powerful enough to buy their way, to use violence, 
to I mean to, to force themselves upon the people. All right, that, that's the kind of uh, I mean election that we have just had. All right, doctor. Talking about institution, we just talked about the security. Now let's talk about INEC. I saw a CDD report which said that distrust between mm. the people and INEC was a problem. Mm. Now this is an institution irrespective of who is at the helm of affairs at any point. Mm. And they, it's a very critical institution to democracy mm. and the growth of democracy in Nigeria. So if this distrust exists, where do we go from here? Well, I, it's, it's very, well, there's no, I mean, the INEC has the responsibility of, you know, boosting people's confidence in that institution. It's the role of INEC to do so. Because as long as people uh, are, don't uh, trust INEC, you know, you know it, it, it affects the image of INEC number one, and it affects the credibility of what INEC, INEC does. For instance, I don't know the number of voters that came out in this election, but it will be far below the number of voters that came out in the presidential election. Because people believe that INEC did not do the right thing in, I mean, when the, the presidential election uh, took place. I mean, some areas, especially the presidential election, they, people believe that INEC was not unbiased. Now, in this uh, election, this one that has happened, the governorship election, you hear about paper has been moved from place to place. You have people moving from one place to another, doctoring documents. And INEC is supposed to say no. You know, INEC is supposed to say no. In fact, there was... Um, I, I, I was, I, I was, I mean, doing a, a kind of research to for a write-up. One man called Ayo uh, um, Eswa. You know, he was um, the first uh, electoral umpire in the in 1964, 65. Do you know that when this man discovered that politicians were misbehaving, he resigned. He said, I'm no longer doing this because I cannot guarantee a free and fair election. I cannot guarantee that INEC, I mean, the electoral empire that I had, can deliver a free and fair election under this atmosphere. He told politicians to their face that this one, I, I cannot do. He resigned and left. Okay. You understand? But as long as INEC cannot look at politicians in the face and say no to them, you know, if INEC cannot look at it and say no to them, I think MAI would do something close well, to that. Well, these days, INEC you know? says it's more of a job of the judiciary, the courts, to decide that. <laughs> because it, for every irregularity or for every concern that have been raised by political party mm. agents, they always say... Well, I think uh, I, 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 just, I just hope that uh, the courts themselves, they will actually uh, do the right thing. Because I, I, there is this phrase that they, that they use in, um, in, in, in dealing with uh, electoral issues. They say substantial compliance. And uh, there was time I was doing a piece about uh, some of these elections. You know, when uh, um, Buhari complained about, I think, the 2007 election, which even Yaradua said was not free and fair, you know, Buhari went to court, up to Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said, oh, oh, well, you have evidence that in Cross River there was this, in this, in this place there were there were mm. these irregularities. Yes. But they say that it, there was no substantial evidence. When Atiku also went to court over, I think, one of the, the 2011, yes. one of the elections, I can't remember that. You know, the, the judiciary said, well, we have evidence that, but it's not substantial enough. Mm. So the, right. the, uh, we are just hoping that you know, our, I mean, Supreme Court, our yes. judiciary will go beyond talking about substantial. Okay. So let us do something that okay, is doctor. specific, that yeah. they ought to be. Okay, doctor, <laughs> uh, we don't have time, but in one minute, uh, there's a new report now that ranks Nigeria as the 95th most happiest country in the world. I would like your take on that. <laughs> 95th most, yes. most happiest. How many countries were evaluated? Maybe no more than 150. Yes, so, so uh, mm -hmm. in the world, it says in the, in the world, world. In the so world. I uh -huh. assume it's all the countries. Mm. Well, I, I don't think, I think it's good to be first. You know, if you are the most happiest uh, country in the world, it's better. Yeah. <laughs> but when you are about, one, about 90 something, like when I was in primary school, you know, we always do to first, second, third. If your name is not among the four, maybe up to seventh but, or eighth. Uh, uh, but yeah. if you go to number 10 <laughs> position, nobody will clap for you. And it was an unfortunate error mm -hmm. where they will well, stand. Well, Nigeria will have, to, <laughs> will have to unseat Finland in that category uh, for them to be the most well, I think the, the, what we need is provision of social, social, uh, social infrastructure. Right. That's, what, that's what, what Nigeria And our needs. happiness will increase. Yes, social infrastructure. <laughs> for instance, I mean, you, right. you, if you need fuel, right, you go to a station, you get fuel. You know? Thank you. Thank you very much. We have to go because of time. Thank 
Thank you. Uh, we appreciate you coming on the program. Thank you very much.